Merry Meet Friends, Vix here, and today I need to make a pair of jeans slightly more wearable and a lot more fun. So these are the jeans in question, and they're not like thick denim, they're quite, quite um, thin and floaty, and I need to add a bit more length onto the legs. Now, the plan was um, to search through my cotton stash and find the dark grey four ply cotton um, blanket stitch along the bottoms and then add a little bit of length, maybe a scalloped edge. Um, they need uh, an inch or two, I think, adding to them. Um, but when I went to check my cotton stash, there isn't any dark grey four ply. So I'm now sitting here and driving myself crazy trying to figure out the best way to do it. So these are the jeans. This is the colour I had in mind, which I think is absolutely perfect. But this is DK and I'm really worried that I won't be able to blanket stitch it around the bottom very well. I'm worried that it's too thick to go through and to look right. Now I have got this rather lovely purple um, which is a four ply but it looks very splitty. Um, but I do have two balls of it so there's no Look at the mess. There's no question that I'll have enough, whereas with this, this is all I've got. So I'm also not sure that there's enough there to do the job. So I'm now just sitting here trying to get started and just driving myself nuts, thinking, should I use this one? Should I use this one? Should I use this one? And a bit of sparkle in there because... I love a bit of sparkle, especially in unexpected places. Um, should I make it and then sew it on on my sewing machine? And I'm just, I'm annoying myself. So I think I really just need to start and see how it goes. Okay, I have done a completely new setup with my filming. So I hope this works. So I, measured it and it's annoyingly enough 61 centimeters around so i am making a stitch every centimeter which is annoying yes but actually i think it's going to work quite nicely i was worried that if the stitches were too long then the crochet will sag off them on the bottom so I'm hoping that being close together means that the crochet will be tight enough to the leg. Now I'm starting on the inside leg, hopefully. Yep, over here. And then what I'm doing is turning this inside out and I'm literally using can't do it. I'm literally using my tape measure to help me keep the stitches even. So I'm lining it up with the top of the hem and then going in right, line it up with the top of the hem and then going in as close to that centre seam as I can. And I think this is where I'm messing up because all I'm doing is just pulling it through. But I'm gonna be honest, I can't be bothered to look it up. And the way I finished it on the other leg, it worked out fine. So, so keeping the tape measure lined up with the top of the hem and then just going in a centimetre along Pull it through and then you need to put it through the loop that you've created so again just keeping the tape measure 
flush with that edge of the hem going in a centimeter bring it through the loop and tighten it up and I'm literally just doing that all the way along and it's been such a quick and easy and fun method I can absolutely see everybody getting um, tea towels and hankies and all kinds of fun and not necessarily useful things for Christmas now that I've learned blanket stitch so I'm just going to move my tape measure along a little bit line it back up and put it back in okay so the blanket stitch is done and again I'm going to start from the inside seam and I'm just going to do two double crochets you can see this here two double crochets in between each blanket stitch where's it gone I've got so many ends Okay, what am I trying to do? Okay, so in, slip stitch and a chain to join, and I'm gonna take my ends up with me and just crochet them in. So two in that one, three, four, five, six, And I think that's going to lay quite nice and flat. So I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around. Okay, so I've done one round of double crochet in the dark grey. And then two rounds in the lighter grey with the sparkle in. I was really worried that I wasn't going to have enough of this to do the whole thing and then the pocket flaps so it's lasting quite nicely um, so now I'm going to do some scallops so I've slip stitched into that first stitch now I've got 126 stitches so I've done some um, experimenting with the different size of scallops and this is the one that I think will work the best so we've slip stitched in the first stitch and we're going to do eight double trebles into then oh was it the fourth stitch yeah so slip stitch skip two stitches and then work eight double trebles into that next stitch Okay, eight double trebles, skip two stitches, slip stitch, and there is a scallop. And then just repeat it all the way around. So slip stitch, skip two, eight double trebles. Okay. 
skip two, slip stitch. There's too much stuff behind it. There you go. And they're finished. So this is what, how would you prefer to see them like this? This is what the cuffs look like snazzy and then on the pocket flaps oh I can't get them open oh my goodness the pocket flaps here we go look so I have swapped up the colors and I've done smaller scallops so these ones are um, six trebles and you only skip one stitch each side before you slip stitch in. And I've changed up the colours because I was worried about that dark grey. But I've actually still got a little bit left. So I probably could have done them the same. But I quite like... I quite like it. So, pockets, cuffs. Um, so they might still be a little bit shorter than I would normally wear them but that's not necessarily a bad thing to be honest because I am unfortunately of the generation of you know wide leg jeans skimming the floor soaking wet up to the back of your knee you know falling apart at the hems. And I will see you soon with hopefully a very scrummy yarn haul. Bye.